All right, five minutes in and out. We're talking a real quickie here. Sexual innuendo, not. So just like all of my fellow hardcore epic gamers, I have been playing the shit out of Resident Evil Village. And I gotta say, because I like Resident Evil 7 so much, because of sort of the epic build-up to this emotional moment that you get it, that was really cool, I was super excited to see the continuation of that story. Now, did we get something even better? Or a good replacement? Uh, Shit, I'm gonna die now. Ah, oh, fuck, no way I get out of this one. I'm so dead. Ha, fucking idiot. What? Haha, -ha, it's like Imbiamba Jombus. Gotta get the knife. Oh, go. oh shit. I'm oh, fucking dead now. Yup. Okay, no way I get out of this one. How? So, uh, yeah. Ari Village is pretty good. It's pretty spooky, you know. Uh, so that's why Ben Shapiro hates abortion. Ah, shit, that fucker's gonna eat me. Oh boy, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, the game is pretty scary, but only sometimes. Other times, you're like the ultimate badass. No, like straight up, everyone's like, oh, Ethan Winters, how strong are you? And Ethan's like, nah, man, I'm just a regular guy. I'm not the ultimate badass, I except for when he acts like he's the ultimate badass. Go ahead, do your worst. You know that No Country for Old Men scene, where Llewellyn's like, "Was this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass?" And Carson is like, "No." It it's it's like that. Everyone around Ethan is like, "You're supposed to be the ultimate badass," and Ethan's like, "I wouldn't say that." All right, serious review time. No more jokes. 100% serious mode now. All right, let's talk about what I like about the game. The guns. The guns feel pretty awesome. I gotta say, in terms of just how they shoot and how immersive it feels and how good it feels to control them, that that's a five. That's a that's a five out of five for me. Five squirrels out of five. And then, uh, alright. And now let's talk about the story. I'm not just like Yoga Ball Gamer where everything has to be a choice in a story or else it's immediately not emotional and not good at all. It has to be all gameplay. Let's talk about the story. It's, 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 pre it's pretty good. You know, I like, I like that Ethan's continuing his saga of surviving everything. It's pretty cool. Uh, the gameplay's pretty cool, but I'm kind of sad that Capcom isn't using its ultimate f figuring out of the gun physics on other stuff, like first-person shooters, okay? I don't care how much enemy variety you throw at me. You cannot use the environment in this game at all to make the gameplay more interesting. You can use it to bait and defeat the enemy's dumb AI. This calls for the old Tallahassee shuffle. Works every time. See you later, kiddo. But you cannot, for the life of you, do anything interesting with the environment. Ooh, let's talk about the location. Remember, remember Resident Evil 7? Yeah, it was basically just Silent Hill 2, but in the location of Resident Evil 1. Now this is like Resident Evil 7, but with the location of Resident Evil 4, and the absurdness of Resident Evil 4, and the enemies of Resident Evil 4. Excellent original gameplay and design, Capcom. Now, of course, this game continues the age-old tradition of kicking up the action from fucking 5 out of 10 action. Pretty action-packed, but not too action-packed to fucking full-on John Wick high octane roller coaster for the last half hour to 45 minutes. 
We're talking. They got Keanu Reeves from uh, Cyberpunk doing the stuff he did in John Wick. They got Shrek from Shrek there. I think he was there at some point. It was just high octane, nonstop action. And I love that. That is an awesome tradition for all video games. Never. Rule of making a video game. I don't care what your game is. I want the last 30 minutes of gameplay to be me with a machine gun killing everything. I don't care. Enough with the enough with the accent. I don't know why I did that. But uh I want to talk about the Duke guy. The Duke guy, he's pretty cool. You, you remember Resident Evil 7 where you you could get like two different variations of weapons but there was no upgrades. That's changed. You can now turn your weapons into pretty cool, pretty cool stuff and do pretty cool, pretty cool stuff with them. And there's many weapons that you can buy and different choices with them. And uh, yeah, I like that. Also, I'd like to briefly mention the replay value. This game will run you between like 7 to 10 hours. However, you're probably going to replay it many times and do other stuff so that you can get CP and not child pornography. We're talking about completion points. Could they have given a better name? Absolutely. In these points, you can buy stuff like infinite ammo and fuck around and completely abandon the original gameplay ideas. That's pretty cool. I like that. And it's not just like, okay, complete it, buy infinite ammo, play it one more time. You gotta play it another time so you can do other stuff, so that you can unlock ammo, infinite ammo for those shits, so that you can do even fucking crazier stuff. The replay value is through the roof. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 replay value. <laughs> Wipe my ass with that game case. Look at this. I'm gonna play that at least twice. So... There's a section of the game where it becomes PT for a minute, and uh, PT, as we know, is the greatest Batman movie of all time. So I liked that part. All in all, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to finish this game off with a a, sev a seven, a seven out of ten, a seven out of ten. That is a reasonable score. Thank you very much. Not so fucking fun fact, as I was pirating the footage that I used for this video off the dark web, something went wrong with shadow play, and it kept freezing, so I ended up having to record the scene where Ethan's hand gets chopped off four times. Now you're probably saying, why don't you just record your own gameplay, and the answer is, I don't feel like having a jigillion gigabytes on my computer. Good day to you, sir.